Hi, welcome to the first of three new pre-recorded webinars about CoCreate Modeling PE 3.0. Are you just starting out with PTC's CoCreate Modeling Personal Edition? PE is a free 3D CAD product you can use to build assemblies of up to 60 unique parts. What makes CoCreate Modeling PE unique is its powerful explicit approach to 3D design. Explicit modeling means that you work directly on the geometry you want to build or change, so you don't have to concentrate on creating relationships and recipes that define a model. In this 10-minute webcast, I'm going to show you some ways to speed up your design work. You'll learn about the Quick Start projects, how to customize the interface, and some useful shortcuts that will help you slash your design times. Here you see CoCreate Modeling PE as it appears when you first log in. First, I'll show you how to access the Quick Start projects. The Quick Starts are ideal, short, practical exercises that can help you become familiar with the explicit approach to 3D design. Click the Help menu, then click Quick Start Projects. You can also view an index of all the Quick Start projects. In this video, I'll do the first Quick Start and show you some shortcuts along the way. If you walk through the Quick Starts yourself, you can watch the videos to see exactly how to do a particular step of the project, or follow the tutorial step by step. As I follow these steps, I go back and forth between the Quick Start project and CoCreate Modeling PE. The main menu keeps flying out. Let's say I don't like that behavior and want to change it. I'll click Edit, Settings, UI Settings, Show on Mouse Over. I'll turn that off. Now, as I go back and forth between the Quick Start project and the CoCreate Modeling PE interface, the main menu no longer pops out automatically. With explicit modeling, you usually follow three main steps to achieve the design you want. Create a 2D profile, execute a machining command, then modify the 3D geometry. When you launch PE, the first thing you'll see is an empty work plane. This appears by default. A work plane is like an infinite piece of paper that you can draw on, posted in 3D space. We'll create 2D geometry here. There's more than one way to do that. The traditional way uses the main menus here on the right. This is 2D geometry, create 2D, and here's where you can create more advanced geometry, like contours. Here are the commands for modifying existing 2D geometry. Everything relating to work planes is located within the work plane menu here. There's also a part in assembly menu, machining commands, and 3D modification commands in their own respective menus. The faster and more efficient way to create the 2D geometry is to use the mini toolbars from directly within the viewport. The viewport's mini toolbars are context sensitive, so they'll change based on what sort of geometry you're interacting with. Right now, because there is no geometry on this empty work plane, I'll click the work plane. The mini toolbar appears and contains the most common commands to start off with. I could draw a line, a circle, or a rectangle. When you hover over the toolbar icons with the mouse, you see the command names. First, I'll draw a rectangle. Look at the feedback on the geometry's dimensions as I drag it out. Here, it's jumping by 10 millimeter increments. If I want to adjust those increments, I can use the page up or page down keys. I'll press page down to make it move in smaller increments. I'll cancel the command by clicking the red X and show you another way. Let's say I know the exact size I want for this geometry. I could click a spot in the viewport to start the rectangle, then press the tab key to toggle between the dimensions and enter them with the keyboard, like this. I'll enter 92.4, tab, 92.4. Now I want to complete the command. I can do that by pressing the green check mark at the lower left corner of the viewport, or just by pressing the middle mouse button. I'll take the middle mouse button approach throughout these tutorials, as well as use mouse shortcuts to position models in the viewport. That is, I'll pan by dragging the right mouse button, rotate by dragging the middle mouse button, and zoom using the scroll wheel. I want to show you a useful help topic where you can learn about the many shortcuts in CoCreate Modeling PE. Here it is, keyboard and mouse shortcuts. There's also a quick reference card that lists the most common shortcuts. If you're new to PE, I recommend keeping a copy handy while you get up to speed. Now I want to pull this profile out into three dimensions. I'll click on the work plane and bring up the mini toolbar. You can see the commands here are different than the last time. It's listing the most commonly used commands based on the current geometry. Here's the linear pull profile command, which I'll use to extrude the profile into 3D space. I could enter a value in the input line, but instead I'll just grab this arrow, which is part of what's called the copilot, drag it out, and OK the command. To enhance the appearance of the model, I can turn on the enhanced realism feature. This will turn on shadows, a floor, and a mirror plane. You can adjust these settings by clicking Edit, Settings, Viewport Settings, Enhanced Realism. I'll leave the shadows, turn off the mirror, and remove the grid from the floor. Now let's say that I want to offset some of the faces of the block. To speed the process, I can do more than one at a time. First, I'll select the faces to offset by creating what's called a select list. I'll click this face, then press and hold the shift key to add another face to the list, then click this face. Now, I'll click the middle mouse button to complete the list. The mini toolbar appears, and I'll select the offset command. 
Now I can drag out the copilot and offset both of those faces simultaneously by the same distance. I'll undo that last command and move only a single face. I click the face, click the move command from the mini toolbar. Notice the green and red arrows on the 3D copilot. You can use these to select a fixed or moved reference for the purposes of measuring based on other geometry. I'll click the fixed reference arrow and then click this edge. Now you can see the measurement is based on the distance to that edge, 100 millimeters. On the fly measurements increase my design speed and help me interact with the model more intuitively. Now I will change the other side in the same way to make it 100 millimeters too. I'm going to add four bosses to this part. To do that, I need to first create a new work plane. Because I want to create the bosses on this face of the block, I'll create a new work plane on this face. Just click the face and select new work plane on face from the mini toolbar. By the way, a work plane is truly an infinite plane. So even though you're seeing it as a certain size, this simply represents where you're working. If you built something outside the square that you're seeing on the screen, it will simply grow to accommodate your new geometry. Now I'm in the 2D copilot mode, and it's asking me for the center of the circle. I want the circle centered 25 millimeters away from either edge. I'll use the measure relative command in the context or right click menu to place the center of the circle according to a specific distance from this vertex. Now I'll click to place the center, and I can drag out the radius or type it in. I'll type in 15 and press enter. Now I'll create the second circle without exiting or completing the command. Instead of using the right click menu to access the measure relative command, I can press R on the keyboard to measure relative to this point and type in the radius. I could create the 2D geometry for all four bosses in that fashion, but I want to show you another shortcut later. I'll rotate the model using the middle mouse button so I can have a better view before pulling this geometry into 3D space. I'll click the work plane, select Linear Pull Profile from the mini toolbar, and drag out the bosses. Notice that there is no need to preview the geometry, everything works in real time. I want to create a blend on the top of each boss. I click the edge at the top of the boss and select the Create Constant Radius Blend command from the mini toolbar. I'll use the copilot to set the radius at 2 millimeters. Now I can simply click the circular edge on the other boss to blend it by the same radius, and if I want to change those blends later, it's easy. I just select the blend, and I can use the copilot to adjust the blend, or type in a new value for the radius. I'll undo that change and blend radius. Do you see how the circular edge isn't very smooth here? You can adjust that by increasing the part's graphical resolution. Click Edit, Settings, 3D Object Settings, Part Miscellaneous, Graphical Resolution. Turn it up, close the window, and the part's appearance is improved. Now I want to create the other two bosses. I can simply box select the two existing bosses and select Move from the mini toolbar. I'll press the space bar and select Keep Feature so that the existing bosses will remain in place. I'll drag them over and complete the command. Now I want to shell this part. I'll click this vertex to open the mini toolbar displaying part commands. I click Shell and it asks me for an open face. I'll rotate the part and select this face. You can see where the bosses were also shelled. I'll enter 2 millimeters for the offset. To make manufacturing easier, I'd like to suppress the shelling of the bosses. In the Suppress Features portion of the command, I'll click From Inner. Even though I didn't start my select list, CoCreate Modeling PE brought it up for me automatically. I'll select each of the four faces, press the middle mouse button to complete the select list, and again to complete the command. Now you can see that the bosses were not shelled along with the rest of the part. That's the end of the first of three new webcasts about CoCreate Modeling PE 3.0. Now for some quick highlights about this explicit 3D CAD software. You can use PE on practically all Windows systems, and you can import 3D data from any other CAD system via STEP or IGIS, or for 2D, DWG, and DXF formats. With this free version of CoCreate Modeling, you can also export your designs to STL for rapid prototyping, or Vermal for sharing 3D views. If you haven't already, you can download CoCreate Modeling PE for free today by registering on our website. It's www.ptc.com slash go slash modeling PE. Your free software will include the Quick Start projects and a full help set too. After you register, you'll also be able to access other useful portions of the website, including frequently asked questions, the user forums, and additional tutorials. In the second webcast of this series, I'll go over machining commands, talk about working with assemblies, make changes to multiple parts at once, create 3D models from an imported 2D profile, and work with other imported parts. The third webcast in our CoCreate Modeling PE series will go over shared parts and assemblies, exploded views, 2D drawings and annotation, and 3D 2D associativity. You can register for these additional webcasts at www.ptc.com slash go slash webcast PE.